Hello and welcome to Earth Star Talk. Today we have two different themes we would like to discuss. One is about uh, a question from one of my clients about cats and dogs and the afterlife. What happens there, where they're going and what they're doing? <laughs> Very interesting. And the second one, a lady was asking me who had recently read a book about reincarnation and soul trap. Well, um, the soul trap scenario is a very interesting one uh, and we are going to channel a little bit about that as well. So um, let's start. Animals, when I do medium sessions, I can see them like all the time. Even if they're alive, they show up in the person's aura even long distance. And I can see, oh, you're having a dog who looks this way or who looks that way. And um, it's always interesting to see how interwoven cats and dogs and animals are to their beloved owners and vice versa. So animals communicate in the spirit world all the time. Now, what do we do with this? I, for example, by the way, I'm Claudia Granger, can uh, tune into the animals to sometimes find them or do animal communications because they are very receptive to empathic um, communications, you know, where you send out and receive information from the ether world. What happens though with animals when they die? Well, most people believe that they go to something like a cat or dog heaven. I can say that we are going about that perception a little bit wrong. The spirit is a multidimensional thing, meaning the soul is not incarnating just in humans. The soul also incarnates in animals and all sorts of beingness. So if you believe you have a soul and you have only incarnated as a human or a humanoid, I would say you're a little bit off there. Because I, for example, remember as I asked my guide once about the details of incarnation, uh, I remembered some of them, but when you come even consciously into this body, as I remember, you know, condensing my energy down into this body, you still forget quite a bit because your processor, your brain, doesn't really compute everything you know in the higher realms. Make sense? So I had to ask once in a while, my guiding ones and uh, one the source, how that again worked. And they said, oh, we will remind you now how you felt when you were in the body of an alligator. And it was kind of fascinating because they bridged me into that life, that past life, I would say parallel life, because they're all happening at the same time. It's like, a, as if you would say, I focus on a part of the kaleidoscope, but everything is ever turning. Yeah, you, you're focusing on one tiny part, but it's ever changing, but it's happening all at the same time. The all parts are all existent at the same time. Or when you look at fractals and you're honing in on one tiny fractal, but does that make that all the other fractals around it do not exist? So same with our lives. We are honing in and tuning into one particular life, but does that mean the others do not exist all at the same time, especially as time and space does not <laughs> my curtain falls off, um, does not really uh, exist. Now, back to this incarnation with the alligator or crocodile. I think it was an alligator. So I was the female there, and um, the only thing I could think of was, you know, eat, sleep, mate, protect my eggs and my nest, and all over again, sunbathing. It was a very simple life, but you know what? It was also a very fascinating life because I felt always connected to everything there is. Talk about animals not being sensitive to spirit or sensitive to the divine. 
as an alligator, I was very connected to the divine design somehow. I felt at my place, I knew what and who I was at that moment in time, focused on that reality. After leaving that existence, I went through a metamorphosis to widen my perception again and Almost instantly, I knew that that was just a tiny, tiny expression of God's source experiencing him, her, itself in an animal through me or through the strand of my soul. So these soul strands are um, leading, like I said in another of our sessions here, like a root system to a tree. And so it was the animal world. So cats and dogs, they're first emanating out of their body and then perceive maybe friends in the cat or dog world of family. Yes, one could say it's an animal heaven, but it doesn't end there. It goes higher up. So what I would uh, recommend for you to understand is that the animal, also when you abuse animals and so on, are also part of the karmic consequences. So when you do good, you will receive good. When you do bad, you will receive bad. Cause and effect is a universal law. And it's not uh, altered just because we do not see all the consequences in one life. There are definitely consequences which we cause in this life and might be explored the effects in another life or, you know, parallel life. So sometimes cause and effect when I do past life regression, they're showing up and it's not linear. Let's say you do something in the 20th century. But if your soul chooses to have that effect, the effect of the cause, um, you know, 5000 BC, that's quite all right. So it's not going linear in the evolution of like a timeline. There it went. Now we're free. <laughs> you see my background with this beautiful artwork of Jean-Luc Bozzoli of I Was In. I have a lot of his work. I love his art. Coming back to the incarnation. So cause and effect is not bound to our artificial timelines because every theater play of life is happening in an artificial timeline. And that will be also important to understand when we talk about the soul trap, which were mentioned in a book. So what happens is that um, coming back to the cats and dogs, their ascent, meet friends, dog friends, cat friends, and then they're going to that soul strand higher up and what that means. Therefore, some of you have experienced animals which felt way more than a dog or way more than a cat. Because even cats and dogs can be soul aware in their body. A dog who looks at you like this, and you see almost another face coming out, can be definitely soul aware of other incarnations with you together. I, for example, uh, met a person who told me that he was incarnated as a dog in a previous life because he was a very brutal soldier and did a lot of horrible things to others. And that was a form of punishment to be less, uh, able to do whatever a human can do and a dog cannot do, to be restricted in his actions and restricted in his mindset. And uh, so for him, he said it was like a punishment to go a step back into a smaller body with smaller possibilities. But it can be also the opposite, that a dog incarnates into the vicinity of a human or towards a human owner because of love, because of assistance. Think of all the animals who are um, working to assist uh, humans. Yeah, 
dogs for the blind, rescue dogs, and so on. They do it out of love. They do not necessarily do it because they were forced by certain trainers to uh, have to do it. And then there are free will incarnations into a dog to be like a leg dog, to have a very emotional bond with an owner, to support him through the difficulties of life. So do not estimate the spirit of uh, which seems to be a small personality of dog. There is way more behind it. But not every dog or cat operates on a full scale of awareness like some of these dogs or cats do. Not all of them do. So you will have had dogs or cats where you felt, man, I'm so connected to this animal. And some like, yeah, you know, they were nice. They were nice companions, but the connection wasn't there. Soul connection is soul connection and can always be felt from the heart. And the heart is the communicator of the soul. Now about seeing of cats and dogs. What do cats and dogs see? Well, they see actually in between the worlds. And if you have lost a family member, a humanoid, and the dog oftentimes looks like up, and about in your room after the loved one has crossed over, then this dog sees a spirit and most likely the spirit of a loved one. If the dog looks more straight in its own heights, then it sees another animal. So depending on whether the dog looks up or looks parallel to its own heights, that has to do with how much or what kind of being um, the dog can perceive. Maybe an animal in spirit form or a humanoid in spirit form or many other beings in spirit form. So the dog and cat perception is not limited to humanoids or other animals. It can connect to a vastness of beings like angelic beings, demons, anything in spirit can be detected by these animals because they have a natural extrasensory perception. Let's take, for example, cats. Cats have a very natural um, connection to energy frequencies. They know what energies are good or, uh, or not so good. And that's why in the old German stories, um, Märchen, they have the witch or the wise woman with a cat on the shoulders because remember in uh, Europe in the olden age it was very cold and they were living in drafty little houses and especially the nature connected uh, women you know, witches they were um, oftentimes very old and they got arthritis. So the cats naturally knew that their owner or the companion of the cat had pain in the shoulders and the necks and it was drafty. So they draped themselves oftentimes around the woman and her arthritis in the shoulders and the neck. And that's why we have this picture today with the witches having cats on their shoulders. Yes, cats can also have been used as a catalyst for some magic or because, you know, like in Egypt, you have the cat and the cat people. And we talk a lot about the cats and seven lives. And um, there are some truths to it. Cats are very distinct watchers in between the worlds. They observe a lot. And when they look into a room and they're fascinated by something, but you wouldn't detect what exactly they're looking at, they're looking into the multidimensionality of things. They're looking beyond the three-dimensional reality of the room. They're looking further and deeper into the spheres of the maybe fourth or fifth dimension. Dogs are more prone to look into the fourth dimension, but cats can look way deeper. That's a uh, part of the association, as I mentioned with Egypt. Give me a second. Um, now let's go about uh, 
other aspects what cats and dogs can do. So as I mentioned, they can see your loved ones when you have a visitation from them. And they don't have to be a ghost. They can just be a visitor coming from the higher dimension, saying hi, trying to be as close to you as they can. Because when a soul is soul aware and crossed over and they are aware that they are eternal soul having had a physical body, meaning they went above, above and beyond a certain awareness level, then they can come and go at will. And as we are multidimensional, part of them is always with the prime creator God source and part of them might explore right and left and up and down and also visit old connections like family members in from one incarnation like here, especially if you're still very emotionally connected to your loved ones on the other side, you function like an anchor to their energy. Or if you have uh, clothes or sometimes it can even be furniture pieces or jewelry pieces, and uh, they can function as an anchor for the soul with the law of associate association to anchor back into this reality of 3D into this particular timeline. Because spirit, it is easier for them when they have an anchor to come down here and to funnel their energy back into a more condensed form. Sometimes crossed over loved ones and cats and dogs have an agreement. An agreement is that the dog is or cat is allowed to open themselves up and receive the spirit of the soul of a crossed over loved one. So the dog opens up to be a channel for that being, that soul of the other, and lets somebody else's energy come through. I've seen that a lot with beloved animals where a child died in the family. And the dogs were very receptive to the uh, glorious soul of these people who maybe committed suicide or had an overdose and because they have a harder time getting up there allow the humanoid spirit to enter them to comfort the left behind family members for example parents i've seen that especially often when uh, kids did suicide or overdose, accidental overdose, that there was an animal who took them in to comfort through the energy and through the emanation of the soul where the dog was like the gateway to comfort the parents. It's really not a rare occasion. So kudos to all the animals who allow themselves to be used as a bridge builder between the spirit world and our 3D world. I always love to see these things because spirit world is more amazing than we can even imagine and nothing ever gets lost and nothing is ever disconnected. With that said, and reincarnation talked about a little bit with the animal world, now I would like to go into the question of my client who said she read a book which was a channeled book with a communication of a spirit of a gray who was captured alive in Roswell. And she was one of the scientists there or caretakers, nurses of this uh, female gray who um, was then undergoing certain experiments by the government. And she had a telepathic contact with this gray female and this gray female related to her all sorts of things folks i haven't read the book so i do not know the details let's just paraphrase for from what my client said and this um female the gray talked about how the overlord she called it would uh, put traps on so that souls would keep incarnating and keep servicing uh, this overlord energetically or for certain purposes because yes there are aliens who are not soul aware who are living in polarity in polarity of good and bad which ends when you are coming to a higher awareness level 
And in this polarity, um, this overlord was still going about the power. I want power, you know, in this game of power play. And I want to have scientific experiences, uh, experiments on humans. And I want to manipulate economically this and that and so on. And for that, he needed souls who were willing to participate. And um, we are, were created as as a humanoid race for dipping into this reality, exploring, experiencing, and then going right back up. But in many different books, not only in this one, it's mentioned that um, certain power hungry, hungry entities came in from other planetary systems and wanting to enslave the race of humans, which were you know, created as free species, but they um, wanted to harvest the humanoid work power and enslaved humans um, along the centuries, not only here as what we know, but even before this time, even before the dinosaurs, there were human called, humanoid uh, civilizations on this planet. The ones, some of them we know as Mu, Lemuria, and Atlantis, but there are some which were way, way older, which we have not much knowledge about anymore, but which we maybe, if there are certain um, volcanic eruptions or certain earth plate changes again, we would be able to see because a lot of these cultures are buried way deep in our earth crust now with all the plate changes. But coming back to the theme at hand, the soul traps. So in this particular book, with the uh, channeled information or communication between the female gray and this nurse or assistant scientist um, taking care, caretaker of this being, she was talking that this uh, trap was created to keep souls imprisoned here and incarnate over and over and over. And um, I was uh, curious to see how that is. And I'm asking now um, the prime creator, source of all light and being, to bless everybody here involved. And only to let the truth come out of my mouth to the best and highest good for all and to the best of my capacity. And let's see what information we're getting to this. Dear beloved souls, we are talking now in the voice of one, source, the prime creator, the one and all and all in one, the one place where no discrepancies, where no dismantling has happened yet. We want to assure you that even though there is the law of cause and effect and there is the law of polarity to experience as you souls wished at one time to experience mine, our existence, which resulted then in karma, but there is also free will. When this woman talked about the soul trap, yes, there is such a thing, a soul trap. But we, as the oneness of one, many in one, that's why we talk about we and not I. And ultimately, beloved ones, you are part of that we. You need to understand that for your further awakening process, that you are part of us. You are part of the bigger we, in one, in oneness, in all oneness. And as that such beings, you have the power to decide whether you would fall back onto coming back to us and falling back into the trap or not. And that's light beings you are, 
you have a choice to make about the awakening now, to remember who you are and that you're part of this all-in-one and many-in-one, that you are part of that who we all are. And when you remember that through your lifetime here, over and over and over, and make it to your awareness that you are one of us, the glorious ones, the light ones, the light beings, that that's your soul, your true soul, and that you freely ascended once into the denser realities. But that now is the time to reawaken, to come back up to us, even already in your three-dimensional body, that you do meditate and that you envision yourself in the gate portal of light. And with this gate portal of light, where you envision standing on the golden light beam, which connects you all the way up to us, all the way up to the core source of who we all are, then that trap cannot do anything to you because you have strengthened your light body while you're already here in 3D Earth. And then you are not operating on fear anymore when you are lifted out of your body. See, beloved ones, when you cross over and your spirit is lifted out of your physical body, you still have ether bodies. Yeah, the emotional body, the mental body, spirit body, ether body, keto body. And these bodies, they will be dismantled around your soul slowly. But if you are falling into this trap mentioned in that book, which is a real thing, the trap, you do not have to tap into that. If you fear that you are not good enough, if you fear that you did bad, if you fear the cause and effect, if you fear, then you might be trapped out of fear. If you're ruthless, and live a ruthless life and leave the body to obtain more power and be more ruthless, you might fall into the trap. But if you take in account that what you will experience when you're leaving your body and you experience all what you did to others, the good and the bad, that's God's justice, which happens to you right then when you're leaving the body, going towards the light. You feeling what you did. You feeling the cause and effect. You feeling this moment of judgment right while you're leaving the body. And you will go through this assessment. Did I do good or bad? Do I really need to come back and explore this here in another time? Or can I now move on? And can I accept, and this is very important, can I accept the fact that I am eternal soul, had this experience, had that experience, had this good experiences, had this bad experience, had this robotic experience, had this animal experience, had this all there is experience. And now I'm done and want to move on to the one star, the all what we are, the oneness in all, the oneness in many. Do we want to go back there? And do I want to bring all my fragmented lives back into oneness? And do I want to be such a strong star and shining bright light to all my incarnations? being there in the highest fields, in the heavenly realms. Do I want to bring them all back up into oneness? Or am I so fascinated by lust, anger, greed, attachment, that I be drawn right back in? You see, we, the many and one, have sent you 
many of us absolutely soul aware beings to help you on the path back to us. Some of you know very well, and some of you you have never heard about. Some of you then became famous, like Jesus or Buddha or many. But some of them, they were having a profile, a low profile, and just worked with the souls they were allotted to, they were assigned by. And you might pass by one and might not even recognize the one because it's not for you to work with that particular guru or enlightened one or master. But these masters, the perfect living masters, came on earth for you to connect with them and guide you all through the traps and many pitfalls all the way up to the many and one and one and many, to the oneness of what we are, to source, God. The word God in your perception, so how it was used in the Bible, gives you a perception it is so far out of yourself. But we want to remind you that soul, what is anchored in your third eye center, is a living spark of that God, is a living spark of who you were, of who you were, of us all in one and one and all. That's the one and all, the soul spark you have sitting in your third eye center, that what animates this body, which will go out of the body when the body cannot function anymore. So, yes, there are traps. There's not just that trap from that power-hungry entity. There are many traps. A soul might even trap itself by some of the lower heavenly realms and say, oh, this is so beautiful here. I want to explore this area and I want to explore that area and I want to explore the lower heavens. But then, because they're so beautiful, might get stuck and not wanting to go further. And that's why certain perfect living masters came to earth to connect with you and bring you all the way up straight, straight through all the traps, straight through all the lower astral levels and straight through all the lower heavenly realms to the highest of one back who we are and to bring all the fragments of all the lifetimes back together into the stream of one. It could be described as the sun rays sent out by the sun and falling onto all the different realities of our planet, all the different beings and places would be wrapped up back and drawn back and go all to the beautiful sun from which they emanated. Similarly, the soul goes back from all that what we are here in 3D and what we were shining our light on, our soul light on, the different existences on 3D here, three dimensions, and no matter what we explored here, and then coming all the way back with the experience. Beloved ones, we experience God source on all levels, all at the same time. It is just a sense of remembrance, the sense of intent. I, here as human, want to go back to that oneness of all, the all in one, the we are one state. 
the we are one state starts already when you are aware that you are eternal soul having had a human body and that you are in God's glory. The moment you fully understand that in spirit after you pass, you have the free will to go further up or go back down. No track trap can really hamper you to go back up, but mostly spirit is curious. That's why we're here in the first place. And in this curious spirit, we often get ourselves sidetracked. But if you have the intent, I want to be done with reincarnations. I want to be done with cause and effect. I want the less karma left over being dispersed to me in a higher realm without a 3D or 4D or 5D, 5D incarnation, then you can. There's nothing really hindering you. Except if you cause more karma to yourself in this life. It's almost like a balloon. If you cause karma, you bring more sand bags to the balloon. And the balloon is heavy and cannot arise. But if you throw the sand bags away and get rid of the cause and effect, the good and the bad, and you try to be the best person you can be with what you have to work with here, and your intent stays strong on the light, and the oneness there is, the all-in-one, where you do not judge these different experiences you did or anybody did to you, and you're operating from the primal point of oneness, from your soul perspective, and you do not judge these experiences anymore, and you do not even judge this warlord or uh, warmongering or powermongering of that existence, of that being, then you will be able to move higher up because you are extraditing yourself out of this positive and negative polarity ping pong play. Unfortunately, in the body you are in right now, in three-dimensional body, it is harder for you to remember the glory of who you really are. And that's why we initialize this talk with her that you might remember of who you really are every single day, that you're reminded of who you really are, because that remembrance of who you are, the glory of the God source, the glory of the oneness, the glory of the all in one, the glory of the one and all. When you remember that about yourself and can feel it, remember the heart is a connection of the soul, then it will be easier and easier to go up even after you have crossed over because you know where you're going. Oftentimes souls, which are very religious, for example, Christians, they might find that what they were expecting in the first time when they crossed over, they might meet Jesus or might meet certain angels. And then they have to go even beyond that. And depending on how their belief is that they want to stay with Jesus right there and right by his side might let them to stay in a certain level. Because even Jesus is way more than the person or their, you know, their persona described in the Bible. It is with the sense of God's son. It's part of us, our oneness. He's right here with us, the all in one. And so are many of our brethren and sisters, all in one and one and all, the source in oneness, in full remembrance of that what we are, eternal light with all possibilities of existence. 
That's why this one always says, God experienced him, her, itself, and all the different facets of existence. And that's what it is. How can we judge God's creation? How can we judge anything which happens? If your mind is strong and stays on the focus of the light, of the all oneness, the all one existence, then the shadows surrounding you, soul traps surrounding you after passing, beautiful reons, which might be a temptation to get stuck there, might not matter anymore. When you keep on the track, on the focus of light, and you tend clear every day, I am eternal soul, wanting to experience that light again, wanting to be connected again, wanting to feel my higher self again, wanting to act from my higher self, higher power, angelic beingness again then you will. And all the pain and suffering you experience now in this body and which is part of a low frequency experience can fall away from you. When people focus on the healed outcome Miracles are possible. That's why this clinic in China, where people were envisioning, for example, the tumor of a woman already being healed and shrinking and gone, and they're focusing on the organ of this woman being perfectly healthy. They had a demonstration where everybody was watching the monitor could see the tumor shrink. But these people, in spirit belief, spirit belief of the power of the true one source, that soul is all powerful, could project that onto the diseased woman and bring everything back at ease, into the ease of their original intent. And so we can also bring us back at ease with the original intent with the original intent of that what we truly are, eternal soul, the all in one, the one and all, the oneness of source. And when we have and hold that intent in our heart, the duality and the pains and sufferings of this world become things on the side. They might be experienced but it doesn't really matter that much anymore. So dear ones, give yourself permission to not be afraid. And when you read about traps and side tracks, bring yourself back to who you really are. We will always be there. You are never ever disconnected from us only that your mind might not remember, only that your emotions might get sidetracked. But you are what you are, eternal soul, in the tiny experience of a tiny body at this moment. So that you remember, and we will be with you always. All right. Um, well, that was interesting. The traps I understood are in, definitely in existence, but like every trap, you can circumvent the trap. That's what I uh, took from this. And I hope you could um, enjoy this um, talk with spirit and the explanation given about the spirit world with animals. And with that, I tell you farewell and stay in light. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.